Hello everybody, I'm just making a quick video here to address the changes that the Dev Dog Daylight team just made a little developer update on. Uh, these are changes that I'm assuming we can expect to roll out in three more weeks. So let's just quickly go over um, just the bulk of it. So we're going to have Survivor Activity HUD, so basically this is just going to be on your Survivor HUD. You're going to see what your other teammates are doing. Uh, if it's repairing a gen, you'll probably see a generator icon doing a totem. You're going to see a totem chasing. Maybe you'll see, like, I don't know, the thing running. I don't know. Yeah, that you see it here. And you'll have a spe killer specific action. So snapping out of it, it'll all show up on your icon. So that's good. That is meant to bridge the gap between solo queue and survivor friends, which obviously survivor friends is pretty, pretty busted, and solo queue can feel kind of bad. Um, moving on. Uh, the wiggle mechanic is coming in, so what was once the beta wiggle mechanic, uh, the bounce between the skill check thing, is now becoming a part of the game. The thing, the only change they're making is instead of hitting great skill checks, shaving a little bit of time off, uh, they are now making it so hitting great skill checks will increase your wiggle speed, uh, wiggle uh, effect. Now this is what I'm, you know, as a nurse main, this hits me hard that they're nerfing the nurse again. Nurse has been repeatedly nerfed ever since her release, and she, I do agree she is the strongest killer. And as they say here, uh, not much stand, can stand between a good nurse and the survivor she's trying to kill. That can be a problem in games like this, where you really uh, you want it to be interactive and against a nurse. If it's just blink, hit, blink, hit, it can be pretty painful. So it is maybe good that they might be trying to change that up. Let's just see what they uh, what they have in plan. So since the nurse can be threatening enough on her own, we've decided that it's time to make uh, her blink attack special attacks. This means they'll no longer activate basic perks such as Star Strike, which I think is the big one they really wanted to get rid of. Ever since Star Strike came out, it was revealed to be kind of a bad perk on any killer that wasn't like the nurse, or like I think some people brought up like Hag or Spirit. Um, so yeah, this will make it so those annoying Star Strike nurses just don't, you know, they just don't get value out of Star Strike anymore. Um, no ed, which I don't think was ever a problem there, so you shouldn't be getting to the end of the game. Uh, it also won't, I'm a, it won't build stacks or save the best for last, I don't think, unless they changed it. Um, it won't proc Sloppy Butcher unless they've changed it, of course. I have gone a while without playing and haven't kept up, but yeah. Um, they've added a sound cue to when the nurse is fully regenerated during all her blink charges, which means when she can double blink again you will hear that uh, she'll make a sound so you know that she's had her blink charges which means if you don't hear it you know that you're not threatened until you hear it then you know that she can double blink and uh, easily down you. I guess that's okay it just like takes some stress off of you because like in the mid chase you're focusing on so much maybe you're not keeping track of if she has her blinks or not so yeah uh, and they're doing a little change in her add-ons to bring her strongest ones down and her weakest ones up. So some of the ones they've done so far is after hitting a survivor with a blink attack, the nurse becomes undetectable for 25 seconds. I believe that was 16 seconds before, and this effect can only be triggered once every 45 seconds. I don't know what it was before, I think it might have been a minute, but I don't know. Uh, generous less breaths. So this is actually a decent change. Once all blinks have been exhausted, the nurse may teleport back to her original position. Once she returns to her original position, all blinks are restored. That is pretty good. Um, so yeah, to have her, all her blinks restored. I think before it did the same thing, just not restoring her blinks. So, I mean, yeah, as long as it's still like you can activate it and not as soon as you do both blinks, you're teleporting back. I don't think that's what it's going to be, but yeah. Um, the full details for the change add-ons can be found in the patch notes once the update goes live, but you can also expect changes for the following. Um, so it looks like they're going to take out range, Kavana's less breath, and heavy panting. They were both her range add-ons, which are pretty problematic. Um, so yeah, the knight is getting a change. So the knight obviously has like been the, probably one of the worst killers they've released in a long time. Um, I, I really feel like he's just a miserable killer. So if we just look at the changes, so the orb survivors see when the killer is creating a path will shrink with distance disappearing completely when the path is longer than 10 meters. So that is good. I actually never played against the knight, so I didn't know he leaves behind an uh, orb. Uh, that's actually nice to know, but uh, uh, but this will be really good because uh, the survivors won't know to make distance. Uh, I mean, they will, 
now that I think it probably won't do much because if you activate your power, the survivor will see the orb and then they won't, but they'll know that uh they'll know once they see it just to run. So I mean it it won't change anything really. Maybe like in some situations, but I highly doubt it really will. Uh, cause survivors sh should just know as soon as they see that orb, I guess, to run. Second, after creating a path longer than 10 meters, the knight will gain a haste as effect for a few seconds. So, a few seconds of haste is not really gonna do much, unless it's, like, incredibly fast. Like, they get a sprint burst, basically, with 50%. But I highly doubt, again, they're gonna do that. They like to be very safe with their hastes. Like, every haste effect is, like, 5 or 3%, I think. So, yeah, not gonna do much. Third, the guards will move to the position they spot a survivor and begin chasing faster, depending on the length of the patrol path. Like the haste, only paths longer than 10 meters will benefit from this. Don't think this is going to do much either. Um, and then gen generators regressing from by the guards will uh, suffer from a 5% little penalty when they're broken at first. I mean, that's fine, but he's still going to be a really bad killer. I still think he's probably one of the worst killers in the game. Uh, definitely one of them, but he might be the worst killer in the game. Um, not much to say about the knight. He's just not very well designed. Um, and they're doing some changes to the Irie of Crows. Um, they're making it less of a rectangle and more of a square, chopping off some square uh, square meters with it, uh, taking away some strong tiles, and putting tiles like this, which you know definitely aren't as survivor-friendly as a jungle gym would be. And this is a nice change they're adding, the in-game challenge tracker. Um, everybody knows the feeling of uh, not knowing if you've done your challenge or not and being one or two, maybe whatever it is, off of your challenge. That can be kind of annoying. So now this is in here to tell yourself that, uh, to tell you if you need to do more or if you're good and you don't have to stress. Okay, game flow improvement. Speaking of challenges, if you've never queued up for a match before realizing that you didn't have a challenge selected, you'll know that you're faced with two choices. Keep queuing and play the next match without a challenge, or back out and select one. You can now browse the ar archives and stores while searching for a match. Okay, so that's good. It gives you something to do while waiting. Oh, you'll be able to spend the blood points and the blah blah as you wait. I'm pretty sure. Wait, what is it saying here? You can. The searching for match indicator will stay in the bottom right corner of the screen as you browse. You'll also be able to spend blood points in the blood web as you wait. I'm pretty sure you've always been able to spend blood points. That's kind of weird. Um, new for our killer players, you'll also be able to customize your non-selected killers while you wait for a match to start. Note the killer you will enter the match with will be the killer you select who started your search with. So, I mean, that's whatever. Uh, Merciless killer. A small update to the Merciless Killer rating. So I'm pretty sure this is like responding a response to the adepts and people complaining that you could get a 4K and because you did it too fast, you wouldn't get Merciless Killer. Um, so it sounds like, yeah, they're going to be doing just the old way. Once you get four kills, you get Merciless Killer. That's going to be good for uh, a lot of killers. Like Plague, I found really hard to do the Merciless Killer. Um, I found Leatherface. Obviously, the Knight is awful. But that's just because he's terrible. Um, a lot of killers with one shots are very hard to get the merciless killer because you have to uh, you have to injure survivors to get points towards uh, one of the medals. Um, iridescent shard prices, that's whatever. And an update on cheating. More cheaters are being banned. That's good. But yeah, the bulk of the update was really focusing on the icons and the nurse changes. Again, we know Dead by Daylight to not really be big on balance changes, big on like changes in general. They're always very lackluster, but it's nice to see something like this. 